This video is addressed to the project lead of Adventure Coast Worlds, Alina. Viewers, please make sure you share this video with her on Twitter as much as you can so she hopefully sees this and can take something positive away from this. Make sure you just tweet her the link to this video and say this is a letter addressed to you or something like that. This video may seem negative at times, but just remember, I really like AQW and I just want it to be better for everyone. I'm going to mention a lot of ideas and suggestions in this video, and I do understand that Arctic's Entertainment has extremely limited resources, and are more limited than even we understand. I don't even know how many staff members they have working on AQW, and I imagine it's a very small amount. So a lot of these ideas will be just completely impossible to implement, but I'm making these suggestions just to have the, just the discussion flowing, and hopefully, hopefully something positive can come out of this. This video is going to be structured with one positive point regarding classes and monsters, with a negative point right after, afterwards to try and balance out the negativity one might feel. Let's start. Starting with a positive note, I actually really like the support category with classes. I don't think that, that the support category needs much work. Now when I say category, I mean, you know, the, uh, the, the categories that the game hasn't necessarily like spelt out in black and white, but you know, there's categories that the community has, you know, seen, and clearly the class designers know this and design classes specifically for the categories. For example, you know, support category, soloing category, farming category, PvP category. Um, but yeah, the support category is really, really good. Support classes in general provide different effects for teammates, and they all have different and unique effects that are applied. For example, Arachnomancer deals, uh, sorry, increases damage and DOTs for teammates, whereas Stone Crusher reduces damage taken and has a small HOT for teammates. The support category really enforces using different classes and trying out new synergies, which is a really good thing for an MMORPG with over 100 classes. The more that you can encourage people to work with, with each other, the better as far as I'm concerned. Now into a negative point. I really don't like the soloing category in AQW. Whether it was intentional for classes to be created as ways to take down anything in the game single-handedly or not, I don't think that that should be something that's possible in the game. Right now in AQW, there's a massive amount of bosses, and each one of these bosses should require a team of people to take them down, not just a single person with Legion Doom Knight. Giving a class self-sustain is fine, but don't also give that class really good damage output. I think that damage output and healing should be two separate things, not something that goes together in a class. A class should fulfill a single purpose and do it well, or in a unique way. Not just do three things all at once and do it really well. An example of this is Stone Crusher. Stone Crusher does support, self-sustain, and insane damage all really well. That's ridiculous, even for a class that's difficult to attain, obtain. Stone Crusher should do really good damage, because I think, you know, I think that that's the thing that Stone Crusher focuses on and executes really well, but I don't think that it should have good support and self-sustain either. I think, you know, at most classes that do a lot of damage should maybe have like, you know, 50 HOTs or like a, you know, like a 100 or 200 like instant heal that they can just sort of whip out occasionally if they, you know, they're in a sticky situation and their healer isn't quite doing enough or whatever. Um, but that's just one example of a class that's not not a master of a single category, but ma rather a master of three different categories. Furthermore, AQW has bosses that I personally think are far too easy to kill. I think my suggestion regarding soloing classes would go hand in hand with a scaling system, where stats scale to each area, and thus bosses and monsters in general always pose a challenge. This would make it, of course, a lot harder to, and to uh, a lot more time-consuming for questing, and especially for you know like the quest where you just have to kill lots of monsters. But if quests and drops were scaled around this idea, it would make the game more fun. Take the situation into account. Say you need to get a one percent drop for a quest from, uh, let's just say King Cole. That's just an example. It's completely false. That that's not actually true. But you know, let's just say King Cole has a one percent drop, uh, and it's a requirement for a quest. This drop rate means you need to kill the monster a bunch of times, probably around 50 times based on that 1% drop rate. That's pretty reasonable, I guess. Now, of course, the current soloing class system means that this boss is likely to be taken on by single players, and as a result, King Cole is, is not very difficult to kill at all. But because he's not very difficult to kill, the drop rate stays at 1%, and so the game encourages you to sit there killing something over and over again, um, and waiting for a drop to, you know, drop, rather than taking down a boss that's hard to kill with a higher drop rate. I think that the game should focus on having hard to kill bosses with a really high drop rates so that you can, you can, you know, get your team together, you know, work out your synergies, work out your combos, and then uh, finally take down the boss. It'd be really time consuming, probably just as time consuming as it would be normally on the current system, but at least during this new system I'm, I'm proposing, 
you would be having a lot of fun. You'd be, you know, talking with your teammates. You'd be just, you'd just be doing what MM, other MMORPGs generally encourage. Um, also, the community really doesn't like RNG. If you didn't already notice, AE, the community really complains a lot about about having RNG drop rates. I I sent the script like halfway through writing it to some people in my Discord server, and they all really really uh, emphasized their support for what I was saying regarding the RNG drop rates. They really don't like RNG drop rates, and so I think that implementing this system, you know, you still have the time consumingness, you still have the, the grindiness that comes with an MMORPG, but you don't have the the sheer luck. And plus, it's not just sitting there and trying to kill a boss over and over again. That's really really easy to kill. Onto a positive point now. I really like how the classes and items. Oh, sorry, the how the classes are items and how the many classes there are in the game. As such, you can adapt for each situation. The game doesn't necessarily enforce this much. You don't have to like. You don't really need to switch classes all that much. Even like Blaze Binder can like solo pretty good. So like you don't often need to switch at all. But if the game became more difficult from what I said before, based on like you know monster scaling and stuff, then you would have to switch and you you would have to adapt for each situation. And I really do like that concept. You know, switching classes up all the time. Other MMORPGs often force you to stay on one class and you know work with that class. But AQW has you know just switch to classes that you like. You know, change it up a bit. You know, see how you're going. And um, that would that would honestly make a make a much more uh, varied gameplay experience. There's potential for a system where each class is objectively similar and how effective they are at what they do. What I mean by that is, you know, you, you have equal value in using healer and necromancer rather than, you know, necromancer being like a really good class at like soloing and uh, healer just being like a, you know, it's a good support class. You'd think, you know, healer and necromancer bring the same value to the table. And so I think that would be like a good, a good concept. Um, to have, and as a result, you would find yourself, you know, healer could be good here, necromancer could be good here, rogue could be good here, death knight could be good here. Um, another way that this system could be fleshed out as well, uh, there, there could be like, you know, like four different types of damages that classes would do, and then uh, four weaknesses that classes and monsters would have, and then, you know, four types of damage that monsters would do as well. So, you know, an example of this, this is just, just a plain old example, I just came up with this off the top of my head, you know, you could easily elaborate and change this up a bit, but just this, this, this example would be good. Uh, you could find a monster that's weak to fire damage and use any fire damage class to kill it more effectively. And But you could also use like a lightning damage class and, you know, it would be kind of effective still. You wouldn't, you wouldn't struggle necessarily. Um, but, you know, you'd, you'd want to you'd wanna try and prioritize using a fire damage class. This would work out well if you had like only like four different types of damages and stuff because um, then you wouldn't have you know, rare classes that were really in need in certain situations. And so I think, I think it's a good balance between implementing n not too many types of damages to uh, make it confusing for people and make, making it so people often don't have what they require, but then also making it fun with lots of different types of ways to play and such. That's just, again, that's just a random idea. You could flesh it out way more if you wanted, but I think that would make it a lot more fun. Now onto a negative point. I don't, uh, I don't actually enjoy how many monsters you often have to kill for certain quests. For example, the Crimson Hanzo Void Orb quest requires you to kill Big Jack Sprat several times, Dread Spider once, Dark Makai about 20 times on average, and about 10 Rattle Bones. All these monsters pose absolutely no challenge at all. Like I was saying before, you're just repeating a mundane task over and over again, and in most MMORPGs, this would actually be considered a poor design choice. But in AQW, people actually celebrated when classes like Blazebinder were released, which actually encourage questing like this. Blazebinder is incredibly boring in my opinion because it you can't miss with it and it, it's designed around the, the concept of just doing mundane boring monsters. It's just not not enjoyable and but yet people celebrate when these classes are released. I propose that a train a, no, a train a change is made in quests where monsters are less uh, where less monsters are required to be killed but the monsters themselves are much more difficult to kill. This definitely makes the game more fun to play when farming, and we're specifically talking about farming here. One of the weakest areas of AQW, like I mentioned before, is the mundane questing, and it's mainly due to the quest prioritizing quantity over challenge. Going back to the Crimson Void Orb quest example, the quest would require you perhaps, you know, instead to kill three Jack Big Jack Sprats and one Dark Makai, but make each kill very difficult and require team cooperation to complete. This would be more interesting than just one hitting Big Jack Sprat over and over again with Blazebinder's fourth ability. Furthermore, making farming difficult and often requiring multiple people at once, 
uh, would would it reduce or eliminate botting completely, which I know is a high priority for for the um, Arctic Entertainment staff members. In conclusion, I think that the current class categories don't actually enforce team play, and I think that team play is important for an MMORPG, and it's you know it's also just fun to play with others. I also believe that monsters are far too weak in AQW, and as a result, players' stats should scale to each area so that players are always challenged when playing. I know a lot of these proposed changes make it the game similar to other MMORPGs like WoW, but these ideas are prevalent in many successful MMO- MMORPGs for a reason, and I hope that something positive can be drawn from that fact. Anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and remember to share this video with Alina. Her t- Twitter is at AlinaAE. Please share this with her. This video is addressed to her specifically, so it would be great if you guys could share this with her. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.